In this film, the term Comprehensive Sexuality Education, or CSE, does not refer to sex education programs in general, but rather to a specific form of graphic sexuality education. CSE is designed to change the sexual and gender norms of society, promotes high-risk sexual behaviors, and encourages even the youngest of children to experiment sexually. For the protection of the viewer, explicit images from CSE texts that will be shown have been blurred out. However, the subject matter is still not appropriate for children. This is definitely an attack on healthy family life. It will affect your economy. It will affect your child rearing. It will affect your education system. This has horrified a lot of people in South Africa. And the tool that is being used, the weapons that are being used, is comprehensive sexuality education. As president of the American College of Pediatricians, I am deeply concerned about comprehensive sexuality education for four reasons. First, it sexualizes children. Second, it threatens children's health. Third, it promotes a dangerous gender ideology. And fourth, it undermines the parent-child relationship, which violates parental rights. My life's work has been to protect children by exposing the roots of the sexual revolution, the sexual rights movement that's led to sex education worldwide, globally. Say not to see us. There is a worldwide war raging across the globe. Not a war of guns and weapons, but a war of ideas, ideologies, and worldviews regarding sex. This is just part of the lesson plan for what's called Making a Difference curriculum, and it is in Oregon schools and probably schools around the nation. Uh, this is uh, instructions for the teacher in the classroom to ask her or his students, how do people express their sexual feelings? What is abstinence? And here are some answers that they try to elicit from the children. Oral sex, masturbation, anal sex, massage, holding hands, touching each other's genitals, saying, I love like you. And what they're doing is equating all these things. Saying I like you is equal to anal sex. Planned Parenthood is coming into classrooms of students who are 13 and 14 years old. They're giving them handouts, negotiating sexual encounters with other students. For example, there are statements like this. Do you want to go back to my room? Do you want to get busy? Can I take your shirt off? It makes me hot when you touch me. Here, can you do that? Is it okay if I take my pants off? This is outrageous. This should not be taught in the classroom. We are state legislators from Minnesota, and we are pushing hard against the agenda to sexualize our children. Minnesota is on the leading edge of this uh, radical agenda and we're trying our best to fight against it. They're pushing a comprehensive sexual education agenda, including the book, It's Perfectly Normal. It is pornography. It is something that even some of my colleagues, men especially on the House floor, did not want to look at. Showing children as young as fourth grade, in fact, it's recommended for fourth graders as their comprehensive sex education. We couldn't show this on the television news, but yet we want our fourth grade children to be looking at this book. When a child looks at a pornographic image within three tenths of a second, that's imprinted on his brain and her brain permanently. We know the, that there's an action that takes place which is called mirroring images so that children will want to or will act out what they see. In the name of sexuality education, children are seeing obscene materials that have been ruled by Congress and by the Supreme Court impossible to show to children. 
where we in Latin America, we still have a lot of poverty. We have communities that don't have fresh water, that don't have electricity, children that cannot finish even primary school. Focus is completely shifted from basic needs to, to this very idealized agenda. They get comprehensive sexual education without the consent of parents, taking and deconstructing the family. They have really concerning campaigns for children. The strongest one is we demand sexual education, impossible to live without it. Uh, one of them is called Put It On. They have elementary students as young as nine years old. Then they teach them how to wear a condom. And they have this plastic genitalia, and they even have uh, young girls. They're teaching them how to put a condom on a male genitalia, and boys how to put a condom on a woman genitalia, without the knowledge and consent of the parents. Most people are unaware that International Planned Parenthood Federation, also known as IPPF, is one of the largest providers of graphic comprehensive sexuality education programs. With 65,000 service points in over 170 countries, this should concern governments and parents everywhere. My brother Luigi and I had an opportunity to go to the United Nations and give a speech on the UN floor. First, my brother explained about how we became orphans when both of our parents died of AIDS. I told him how Planned Parenthood was passing out a booklet for HIV-positive youth at the United Nations called Healthy, Happy, and Hot. This is for the kids who have AIDS. The booklet says its purpose, and I quote, to support your sexual pleasure. It tells youth they can have sex in different ways. It teaches about sexual pleasure through masturbation with same-sex partners and even if you are drunk. One of the most disturbing things I think that I've ever seen as a physician, this pamphlet called Healthy, Happy, and Hot, put out by International Planned Parenthood Federation, tells young people and you have the right not to disclose your HIV status to a sexual partner if you're not comfortable. I was just so offended at the booklet that Planned Parenthood put out, inviting people living with HIV to engage in the very acts that would harm them. It's all about rights instead of health. It also tells young people that are HIV positive that if they decide with their partner not to wear a condom, that's their decision. It's just this kind of information, it's so unbelievable to me as a physician. This kind of message was a death sentence to not only both of my parents, but also my brother Rogerio. I couldn't understand how a pro-abortion or abortion service provider in the United States of America was in South Africa and promoting the homosexual lifestyle. Here we try to protect young people from getting HIV AIDS and be promoting a lifestyle that is very high risk. In Guatemala, an affiliate of Planned Parenthood is huge. They have more than 2,600 service points 27 permanent clinics and five mobile units. Planned Parenthood became very active uh, in the 90s in Russia after the collapse of Soviet Union. They would provide uh, textbooks for the Russian Ministry of Education and penetrate the official educational uh, networks. Some of those uh, textbooks were really bad and tried really to sexualize children. The Swedish Planned Parenthood presented a film of about 30 minutes, an animated film which is addressed to young people of 13 to 14 years old. It is called Sex on the Map. In this film, the young people are taught that anything is okay as long as you agree and it feels all right for you. International Planned Parenthood Federation, especially in the Latin American region, is omnipresent. Be it at the mission at the United Nations, the person, for example, working on the actual language, drafting the document, is a direct International Planned Parenthood affiliate. We see the same thing in the Mexican government. They're usually the number one advisor to the mission. They have a direct influence on the outcome documents, on what, what is established, what is negotiated at the UN. Planned Parenthood is one of the largest organizations in the world pushing sexual health and reproductive rights. What, what they mean by that is not so much about reproducing. It's not about health care for babies, for mothers who want to have babies. It's trying to prevent the birth of babies. Many of the key players that are advisors to the representatives of various countries, they're actually directly linked to um, International Planned Parenthood Federation. It's really striking how International Planned Parenthood Federation plays such a big role. and what 
what we just can't put our finger on is how that happened. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood Federation. She was part of the eugenics movement that uh, she referred to black people as the weeds of society. She believed in this, this ideology that, uh, that the weak people in society should be weeded out. They must create themselves as an agency here to help Africa plan its population. What they're trying to do is to suppress the African population. They do it through education, making sure that whatever reproductive health care is wanted is in the direction of not having children. The It's All One curriculum, also promoted by International Planned Parenthood, reveals the multiple manipulative tactics used to indoctrinate and sexualize children through CSE. Like other CSE programs, It's All One claims, among other things, to be evidence-based, comprehensive, human rights, gender-sensitive, and culturally appropriate education that will increase young people's responsible decision-making to reduce adolescent rates of pregnancy and sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. It's All One, however, like most CSE programs, is really just cleverly disguised abortion rights, sexual pleasure education masquerading as human rights, gender, and sexual and reproductive health education. It indoctrinates youth in radical feminist ideologies regarding power, privilege, and equality. It aggressively promotes abortion with 112 references to abortion, manipulating young minds using scare tactics, telling girls, every minute of every hour a pregnant girl is dying so we need to legalize abortion. Students are then required to read stories of girls who have had abortions so they can learn to walk in her shoes in the decision to have an abortion. Like other CSE programs, It's All One has an obsessive focus on sexual pleasure, mentioning sexual pleasure 62 times. It promotes multiple sex acts, the idea that one sexual practice is not better or worse than another, and instructs children on how to stimulate themselves or their partner to orgasm. Children are also asked to read personal stories about feeling sexually attracted to someone of the same sex. It also helps students identify the skills they need to be able to negotiate comfortable sexual relationships and claims there is no right age to have sex and that each person has to determine when he or she feels ready to have sex. To explore their readiness, children fill out a worksheet that infers children are ready to have sex when they are feeling close to the other person, when both of you want to have sex, when you are feeling sexually attracted to the other person, and when you are feeling comfortable about telling the other person what feels good sexually. It teaches that human rights encompass sexual rights, including alleged rights to all persons to sexual expression and the right to seek sexual pleasure. Students are also given a list of problems they can work on or advocate for, such as adolescents don't have access to sexual and reproductive health services, and where abortion is illegal, it is dangerous. It's All One curriculum has been in high demand since it was launched several years ago at the United Nations, with requests coming from more than 150 countries and from every state in the United States. This program has been taught to children across the world. It can be difficult to understand why any organization would promote promiscuity and high-risk sexual behaviors to children through comprehensive sexuality education. However, hooking children on sex is a multi-billion dollar business for Planned Parenthood and other similar organizations. This is because children, or prospects, once sexualized, become Planned Parenthood customers dependent upon their services and then are turned into peer advocates or educators recruiting other young people as peer educators to generate even more customers for Planned Parenthood. Some of the lucrative, youth-friendly services Planned Parenthood and their partners provide include sexual and reproductive health counseling, contraceptive counseling, including emergency contraception, abortion services, sexually transmitted infections, including HIV prevention, treatment, and counseling, and now they even provide transgender hormone services. Planned Parenthood aggressively and quite successfully lobbies governments and the United Nations for millions of dollars annually to fund their multiple services and programs, including CSE. Some of their top executives receive high six-figure salaries 
Yet, most governments are completely unaware of their true sexual agenda. Just looking into the next years in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals that determines the agenda for the next 15 years, the voice is very, very biased. It's just International Planned Parenthood Federation and their affiliates who actually make the suggestions. The United Nations is also aggressively pushing CSE for children worldwide. A prime example of this is the International Guidelines on Sexuality Education, published by UNESCO in cooperation with UNFPA. Some of the objectives of the UNESCO Sexuality Education Guidelines include teaching children, among other things, at age 5, that masturbation is not harmful, at age 9, about sexual stimulation and the definition and function of orgasm, at age 12, about respect for different sexual orientations and gender identities, and at age 15, that both men and women can receive sexual pleasure with a partner of the same or opposite sex. When I go to the UN behind closed doors, I was really shocked. Comprehensive sexuality education, which was being pushed at us, really meant encouraging children to experiment sexually. The comprehensive sexuality education is presented as a silver bullet that would solve all the problems. It's seen as the index to economic growth, as a solution to poverty, as a solution to everything. Even more disturbing are the World Health Organization's standards for sexuality education in Europe. These standards actually suggest that children ages 0 to 4 should be given information about enjoyment and pleasure when touching one's body parts or masturbation and given the right to explore their gender identities. For ages 4 to 6, children should be taught about same-sex relationships and respect for different norms regarding sexuality. For ages 9 to 12, the differences between gender identity and biological sex and about their sexual rights as defined by International Planned Parenthood Federation. And finally, for ages 15 and up, children should learn to celebrate sexual differences about violations of their sexual rights and their alleged right to abortion. The UN's children's agency, UNICEF, also promotes comprehensive sexuality education, and as far back as 1999, UNICEF was also found to be promoting the sexual pleasure agenda. For example, on page 89 of a UNICEF-published Sexual and Reproductive Health Manual for Pregnant Teens in Mexico, UNICEF listed situations in which one can obtain sexual pleasure that included sexual responses directed towards inanimate objects, animals, minors, and non-consenting persons. The way they're doing this is to actually penetrate our schools. And so once it changes at the policy level, then we'll probably have no control over what is taught in the schools and who teaches it. An online CSE program for African youth called The World Starts With Me tells children that sexuality includes French kissing, oral sex, and masturbation. It then tells them it's their own choice if they want to lose their virginity. It shows children pictures of naked girls and boys in various stages of development and then ask them to point out differences in their private parts. Parents likely will never know, as it is all done online away from home. This program has been found in Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Ghana, and is probably in many other African countries. We have had uh, several high-level visits to Jamaica and the Caribbean from Prime Minister David Cameron of the UK, from the Secretary General of the UN Ban Ki-moon, and from President Barack Obama. This is about pressuring the Caribbean to accept the sexual rights campaign. Letters have been written, try to get the Nigerian delegation to actually yield in matters of comprehensive sexuality education. The UN is for all countries, great and small. As such, it should not be used as a platform to advocate tendencies, ideologies, or ways of life that are at variance with its core principles and mandates. Many times we're cornered by other delegations seeking to impose a radical sexual agenda. We were confronted with a text that was replete with controversial issues, extremely divisive in nature. The Nigerian government was actually told by the Western countries that if they do not give in, that they will be denied foreign aid. Let me express serious concerns regarding UNFPA's attempt to discredit 
the government of Nauru and its permanent mission to the United Nations during these negotiations. UNFPA has tried to convince my country to change our positions on issues such as reproductive rights and comprehensive sexuality education. Harassing my capital or going through UNFPA's regional office in the Pacific will not change my country's position. Madam Chair, does the UNFPA think it can do this because Nauru is the smallest member state of the United Nations? The interests of organizations like UNFPA and IPPF is to get parents out of the picture and to radicalize and sexualize children. At the UN, if parental rights is being proposed in a document, it's thrown out. A report by the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the Right to Education issued to the UN General Assembly claimed that children have a right to comprehensive sexuality education aimed, among other things, at abolishing guilt feelings about eroticism and that will teach about the importance of sexual diversity. In comprehensive sexuality education, the approach is to celebrate sexual freedom or sexual license, to celebrate experimenting from a medical perspective when sexual freedom is the priority, then sexual health is going to suffer. You just can't have it both ways. If a sexual education program is teaching a child or leading a child towards multiple sexual relations, early introduction to sexual intercourse, it is, by the data, a public form of sexual abuse. Out of wedlock births are going to skyrocket. They're going to have many more abortions. They're going to have much more STDs. The probability of depressions and anxiety directly out of matters sexual increase very significantly. So our country had a visit, a secret visit, from the U.S. Special Envoy for LGBT Rights, Mr. Randy Berry. He was accompanied by the Senior LGBT Coordinator for USAID, Mr. Todd Larkin, to try and see what the Jamaican climate was regarding sexual rights and how they could influence change. We were able to notify the public about this visit and to send a very clear message to the U.S. government that Jamaica will not be pressured into changing our values and our culture that protects the family. The Center for Disease Control in their own research shared information that 2% of the population of the U.S. are men who have sex with men. And of that 2%, they account for 68% of the HIV infection. And the government of the United States spends $12 billion annually just to take care of that. I actually had to say to them that Jamaica cannot afford to spend that kind of money. One of the handouts that concerns me the most is called the gender-bred person. They teach that gender is a spectrum, that you can choose to be whatever you want. You could be all female one day, and the next day feel like you're neither female or male. Frankly, it's confusing. It's a mental molestation. We're confusing these kids as to what they are. The greatest medical fraud in history is to sell, tell someone that they can change gender. I lived as Laura Jensen for eight years. I discovered that biologically it is categorically impossible to change a man into a woman. My life was completely torn apart. We have a whole specialty in medicine called gender-specific medicine. Did you know there's male and female kidneys, male and female hearts? If there's a woman who needs a kidney transplant, she will do better with a kidney transplant from a woman because a kidney from a male Every cell in that kidney is going to have a Y chromosome. When we prescribe medications now, is this patient male or female? Because the reaction to the medication may differ. Leading young children down the path of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and mutilating surgeries places them at a greater risk of developing high blood pressure, stroke, heart attacks, cancer, relationship problems, anxiety, depression, and suicide as adults. There are laws in Oregon where children as young as 15 can get taxpayer-funded sex changes without parental consent. You can't have an aspirin at school without parental consent. However, a student could make these life-altering permanent decisions 
without the parental knowledge or consent. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association reports that as many as 98% of boys who are confused about their identity will come to accept their biological sex by the time they are adults, as long as they are not encouraged in their confusion. They're tampering with the core identity of these young people and confusing them. This is the enemy of my children and my grandchildren. And it's digging down into the core of being male and female, of our identity as persons, of our family life, of our children. The Minnesota State High School League um, created policy in sports which broke down the barriers of what gender identity actually is. They are no longer allowed to tell students you can or you cannot use a particular bathroom. The girls in the school that would actually try sometimes to go into the bathrooms just to get away from a boy, but now that's no longer possible because these boys can follow them right in. Comprehensive sexuality education programs are disguised under many names. They may be called comprehensive sex or sexual education, education on human sexuality, reproductive health education, information on sexual and reproductive health, family life education, teen pregnancy prevention, rape prevention, anti-bullying programs, HIV AIDS prevention, and sometimes even abstinence or abstinence plus education. CSE programs usually falsely claim to be age-appropriate, evidence-based, healthy sexuality education that will prevent teen pregnancy, sexual abuse, STDs, and HIV. This is to help people, uh, young people, uh, avoid the dangers of uh, HIV AIDS uh, in South Africa. And they were telling them how they could have non-penetrative sex, oral sex, experimenting. So how is this helping people to avoid uh, HIV AIDS? This pamphlet or zine as they call it is called dry humping saves lives this means abstinence so they suggest that children masturbate or masturbate in, in front of a mirror or in front of one another anal sex oral sex uh, grinding uh, sleeping together caressing uh, sexting they suggest sexting which would be um, getting your groove on fluid free and again this is abstinence to them so they're in actually encouraging sexual experience for children and calling it abstinence sexual rights sexual education movements began with Dr. Alfred C. Kinsey. He was a professor at Indiana University. His book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, purported to say that everyone in the world was engaged in massive sexual uh, promiscuity, that it was a global pattern of sexual behavior. Kinsey claimed that the research published in his book proved that children are sexual from birth, that children could engage in sex with no downside, no problem at all. Kinsey actually had pedophiles measure with a stopwatch how many children could achieve what he called orgasms within a 24-hour period. In his book, Kinsey defines orgasm for these children as fainting, as having convulsions, as screaming, as fighting to get away from the partner, what he called the partner. Kinsey documented the sexual abuse of children. Table 34 documents the sexual abuse by pedophiles of children from five months of age to 13 years, 317 children in that one table alone. The so-called research then, exploitation of these children, became the philosophies behind the entire structure of modern sexual education globally. Today, comprehensive sexuality education is based on this philosophy that children are sexual from birth, created by Kinsey. Three main organizations that promote Kinsey's harmful sexual philosophies are the Kinsey Institute, Planned Parenthood, and the Sexuality Information and Education Council of the United States, also known as CECUS. In fact, Mary Calderon, the main founder of CECUS, was the former medical director for Planned Parenthood and a former Kinsey Institute director, Wardell Pomroy, was also a founding board member of CECUS. 
These three organizations are all accredited by the United Nations and use their UN status to promote Kinsey-based sexuality education to children across the world. We have tried to stop it, we have tried to break the consensus and ensure that comprehensive sexuality education has no place in the United Nations agreed language. We've got to stop it, we've got to use everything at our disposal, we have to stand together to stop this attack against our children. The material was exposed by one individual and the entire nation got wind and as a result of it, it had to be withdrawn. Every well-thinking adult must be vigilant and must stand as a gatekeeper to our children's development. Band together and find ways to stop it from entering your country. We are trying to stop Planned Parenthood in Guatemala. And they have all this funding and this organization, but we know that if we stand together, we can do something for the family, for the children, for the future of the world. We're in a battle. Um, if this has not come to your state in a full way, I can tell you it's come to Minnesota and we deal with it every single day. As elected officials, if we can't rise and stand up and speak out on behalf of our children, our innocent children, what are we even doing? What are, what are we even doing here? We stopped the Kinsey Sexuality Education Program in Croatia. I went to Croatia. Um, I held up the Kinsey books in, the, in Parliament. I described to them the basis of the Kinsey books and held up the children of Table 34. And the Constitutional Court banned that sex education program. The American College of Pediatricians wants policymakers to understand this. When considering a sexuality education policy, be certain you specify that it be a sexual risk avoidance program. You must reject comprehensive sexuality education. We want to teach children to avoid all the risks, 100% of the risks by avoiding early sexual behavior. These people, whoever they are, who want to make the sexual only about the pleasure, are working to destroy everything we are building. We resist it, even with our lives, because that's what life is all about. It is time for parents to say, no, my family is mine. My wife is mine. I am hers. Our children are ours. They don't belong to the state. And people of different faiths can easily band together on this. I may be a devout Muslim. I understand this. I'm a devout Mormon, I understand this. I'm a devout Roman Catholic, I'm a devout Evangelical. On this parental issue, we are all together. Just understand, it's happening on our watch. If we don't do something about it, it is all of us that carry that guilt. Men have to rise up, defend their family. On matters sexual, the fathers have got to stand up. Say, that you have no place talking sexuality to my children. We must let the world know the roots of this radical, destructive Kinsian sexuality education. That is the only way we will be able to stop the corruption, the destruction of the world's children. Family Watch International invites good people from all around the world to join us in this worldwide battle to protect the health and innocence of children. To learn more and to sign the petition to stop comprehensive sexuality education, go to stopcse.org. You can also help by encouraging others to watch the documentary and sign the petition as well. Together, we can and will protect the world's children. The time has come, the time